Welcome to StarTest, the computer interview. Please just relax and enjoy yourself. My name is Danielle Dax and I'm a musician. I write and record all my own music, I produce it and I guess also I'm an all-around artist. I paint, I design record covers, I make clothes. Here are nine categories of questions. Please select a category by simply touching the screen. Sweet and sour. Mm, eight. Which is your best physical feature? Oh, my hair. <laughs> One. What do you most like about yourself? Um, that I'm very straight. Uh, you know, candid and forthright. I think that's... And I'm not a coward. Twelve. What sort of people make you feel uncomfortable? Um, bigots, um, very, very, uh, very sexist people, very um, racist people, people who are uh, in very insensitive and people that don't have a sense of humour. I think there's something wrong with someone that can't laugh at themselves. I think it shows a kind of conceited ignorance in a way. Thirteen. What was your funniest practical joke? Oh, God. Um, well, there have been quite a lot. I mean, stupid things like uh, dyeing someone's hair purple and um, turquoise when they were asleep once. Um, and <laughs> unfortunately, they got the sack the next day, but just things like that. Eleven. What's the one thing that you don't have in your life that you would really like? A cat or lots of cats, um, lots of pets in fact, but I have allergies to animals so I can't have any at all, which is I suppose in a way how some people, how some women especially might feel about not being able to have children. I mean my big passion is animals and uh, I always feel that there's something lacking by not having them. Fifteen. Which parts of your body might you choose to change? Oh dear, well that depends on what kind of mood I'm on. Um, I think uh, I'm not really that, that sort of preoccupied with it. There are days when I'd like to look completely different um, and there are days when I'm quite realistic. Nine. What do you collect? Um, I'm an avid book collector, really to my detriment because I have too many books and not enough space. I also collect um, weird and wonderful instruments. I have been collecting them since the early 80s. I have uh, a sitar, a zaz, which is like a Turkish stringed instrument. I have 24 Ecuadorian pan pipes that someone bought me back um, from a field trip. I have a flute that's made out of a chair leg. Lots of about 11 guitars, saxes, trumpets, you know, lots of things like that. I don't collect objects, I don't collect knickknacks or anything, but instruments, books, anything that you can learn from. Um, and if I were rich, I would like to collect land and leave it, leave it for, you know, the sake of animals and birds and ecology generally. Uh, that would be wonderful. Now please select a new category. Um, before and after. Before and after. Please choose any number. And I have seven. What would you like to have been if you'd had a different career? Ooh, uh, Elizabeth I or um, Jesus maybe without the suffering. Um, nine. Did you ever run away from home? Um, once when I was about 16 and uh, wasn't allowed to go to a party so I ran away for three days. Three. What nicknames have you had? Um, Pinchbeck, Winchelsea, uh, they used to call me Fishface at school, which was rather unpleasant. Um, Dandy, my mother used to call me Dandy. Um, and probably lots of rude things too. Fourteen. If you could meet yourself as a 16-year-old, what advice would you give yourself? Um, believe in what you want to do and don't be put off, especially by men or boys, um, and just work really hard and have that self-belief. I think 
Uh, Noel Coward once said, to be a star, you must have inherent belief in your own destiny. And I think there's quite a lot of truth in that. Um, six. What do you write in your diary? Um, well, I keep two different sorts of diaries. I keep an everyday diary, which is full of trivia to do with, you know, went to X, Y or Z and saw blah, blah, blah. And I also keep a dream diary, which to me is quite important because I think that the, there isn't just a, such a thing as the real world. I think there are parallel worlds and um, I think dreams can influence your everyday life and they're just very entertaining. I draw a lot of my creativity from my dreams. Which is your favourite painting? Um, well, I like lots of different paintings. My favourite artists are really um, like Chagall, I like Ed Keenholtz, um, I like Picasso, Kandinsky, lots and lots. Who is your favourite author? Uh, again, it's really difficult to, to choose just one. I like um, Ian Banks a lot. I like The Wasp Factory in particular. Um, I like Tamar Janovic. Um, I like Ian McEwan and I like J.G. Ballard an awful lot. Do you take sugar in tea? Oh God, no. Horrendous. What car do you drive? Um, I don't drive at the moment, but if I, if I could, I think I'd like to have um, a customised hearse with a double bed in the back. Who is your favourite designer? Mm. I like Pam Hogg. I like Moschino, um, Boyd and Story, um, elements of Jean-Paul Gaultier. Where did you last go on holiday? Um, I went to Mexico. It was wonderful. Who is your favourite actor? Um, I like Robert De Niro and Al Pacino. I like Glenda Jackson, um, Flora Robson, Betty Davis. Uh, yeah, Michael Caine as well. Who is your favourite film director? Um, well, I liked David Lynch's Eraserhead. I think that's one of my all-time favourites. Do you like bubble gum? No, it's ghastly. I think it's made of crap. It's horrible stuff. Were you breastfed? <laughs> I don't remember. select a new category faith and fortune faith and fortune please choose any number four how psychic are you oh um i don't know about psychic i feel very um aware of unspoken feelings within rooms um between people i'm very sensitive towards things like that uh a few places I've been to have been very disturbing. Um, for example, I went to Tewkesbury Abbey once with my parents and I found that really horrendous. And the same, I went to Dachau when I was on tour once and I found that absolutely horrific. I couldn't actually go inside and um, the band went into, into the place and by the time they came back, I was very disturbed by it. Uh, yeah, I think, I think people who are genuinely you know, quite sensitive and artistic do tend to be open to those kind of things. Fifteen. To what extent do you follow your stars? Oh, I don't. I don't really. Thirteen. If you were a ghost, who would you haunt? Oh, um, I'd haunt 
the people who are responsible for destroying the health service. Um, I'd haunt um, anybody who was responsible for um, oppressing groups of people, I guess. I'd be quite a vicious ghost, really, you know, the people who um, instigated Clause 28, if that's what it still is, um, people who are responsible for privatisation of things like the water board, people that run the nuclear industry for all the suffering that they cause and all the lies that they tell. And there's, there's so many. Eleven. What is your vision of heaven? Oh, um, a bed full of Siamese kittens. Ten. If you met God, what would you ask her? If you met God, what would you ask her? <laughs> um, why are the nicer people not as successful as the shitty people? Please select a category by simply touching the screen. Inside and out. Inside and out. Please choose any number. Three. What faults would someone who didn't like you list about you? Oh, God. Um, well, I think with me, people either really like me or they really hate me. Um, probably the ones that don't like me say that, um, that I have a bad temper, which I do. Um, I think I tend to be quite impatient as well um, and I've had a lot of trouble with, with men over the years because I, I won't take any, any shit from people and um, there are certain types of men who don't like women who have very strong ideas and are very determined and are not willing to become second class citizens and be very dominated and stuff so I guess that's caused a lot of problems. One. When did you last lose your temper? Um, I can't honestly remember. I don't lose it that often. Um, it takes a lot, but when I do, it's, everybody really knows about it, but it goes very quickly as well. I don't hold gr grudges as such. Twelve. How much do you like looking at yourself in the mirror? Oh, God. Um, generally, I can't stand it, especially if I've had a really heavy night the night before. Um, I think I'll do it, like I'll put makeup on and I'll worry about my appearance for certain things, but uh, if it's not for that, I don't really bother for... What motivates you? Um, well, I hate being bored, so I always like to have things planned. I like to have, a f you know, in a few weeks' time, so-and-so is going to happen, and in six months' time, I've got this to aim for. I think, really, uh, I have to make things happen myself, so um, it's just simply a case of wanting to make my life as interesting as possible and uh, enjoy it as much as possible, I guess. Um, and I'm quite ambitious, so that's always there too. Six. What do you most want people never to find out about you? Um, I don't know, because I'm quite candid about most things. I'm, I'm quite secu security conscious. Um, I don't like invasion of privacy very much, so I tend to be uh, on my guard about opening the front door to people if I don't know they're coming round and things like that. But I think that's just due to having had, um, you know, fans phoning up a lot or turning up on the doorstep and things. So it does tend to make you um, a bit more wary than maybe the average person would be. Please select a new category. Power and glory. Power and glory. Oh, um, 14. How nervous do you get before a performance? Um, the beginning ones of a tour, I do get really nervous. After that, it's different. It's not um, absolute catatonic nervousness. It's more a case of your adrenaline starts going. And um, I think I have so many things to worry about before performing that I can't really indulge in being so nervous that I can't function anymore. Four. You are a Dalek. Who do you exterminate? Oh, dear. Um, well, I guess a lot of fake religious um, broadcasters in America might be the first to go. Um, some people who I daren't mention for health reasons. Um, 
I think Mrs Thatcher would be a good one. If I had an incurable, incurable illness, I think she might be quite near the top of the list. Uh, Marcos, um, quite a lot of dictators, basically people who abuse their power. Eleven. Who would you stand next to in the Hall of Fame? Oh. Well, I guess carrying on from the last question, I think it would be interesting to stand in between, say, the Ayatollah and Salman Rushdie. It would be quite good. Nine. How much do you owe your fans? Um, well, really, at this point, quite a lot, because nearly all the people that buy my records have become interested in them through word of mouth, and they've stuck with me for quite a long time. And uh, I've never been you know, flavour of the month or incredibly trendy or anything. So the people that buy my records that come to see me perform are really loyal and, uh, you know, I appreciate that. So, yeah, they mean quite a lot, too. Are you a bad loser? Um, no, I'm not. Uh, I don't like to lose, but at the same time, um, I'm not, what's the word? I'm not an ungracious loser. 13. How private do you like to keep your private life? <laughs> Very private. Please concentrate hard on answering the questions in this section truthfully. If you appear not to be telling the whole truth, mm -hmm. you will forfeit the chance to plug your latest video. <laughs> From the five questions which follow, you may pass on just two. Have you ever ridden the white knuckle ride? Um, no. How was it in the company of wolves? Um, uncomfortable because uh, it took a long time for them to change my hair and I had prosthetics which is like a kind of rubber thing applied to my forehead and it used to take about four hours for them to make me up and do the hair and the rest of it. So it was kind of a bit gruelling, but it was exciting too because I was very interested to see how the technical side of filming worked, the lighting, you know, the smoke, the sound, all the rest of it. Do you think you're more of a wigged-out old hippie or a talented, conscientious love bomb? <laughs> Definitely a wigged-out old hippie. <laughs> You now have 30 seconds to plug your latest video. Please start now. Oh God, I hate doing this. Um, my video is for the single White Knuckle Ride. Um, I can't describe to you what it's about because I don't have enough time, but uh, I'm not gonna say anything. You can all make up your own minds. Love and passion. Love and passion. Three. Please choose any number. Three. Which emotions do you find most difficult to display? Um, the emotions that I will only really show to people that I'm very close to, like my friends or my family or whatever. Um, certain types of vulnerability. Uh, I don't cry in front of people that easily, unless I know them really well. Nine. What is your most wicked fantasy? Um, I can't possibly say now. <laughs> Twelve. When did you last fall in love? Uh, oh, <laughs> eleven. How many hearts have you broken? Oh, that's a difficult one. Mm. 
I don't know, I don't really think about it. Ten. Who was the last man you fantasized about? I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> Seven. Did you send a card last Valentine's Day? Yes. Four. How far do sex and love go together in your life? Um, I think that they're not always linked. I think you can have really good sex with someone and not really feel that much for them. And the same way I think you can really love somebody and not necessarily fancy them or whatever. I think that there's probably too much importance put on sex. Uh, I think it's much more important to get on with somebody and have a kind of very deep friendship, like having a best friend almost, and the sex will come out of that. But I think um, if you don't have the feelings, um, it's difficult to sustain a good sex life. I mean, you can have a kind of fling, but to make it really last, you have to really care for somebody. 14. How would you describe the perfect relationship? Um, I don't think there is a perfect relationship. I think um, that's a myth perpetrated by the Mills and Boone and Barbara Cartlands of this world. Um, I think that someone else's foibles, somebody else's faults, are part and parcel of the way they are, and you love somebody for everything about them, good points and bad points. Um, I think it's when people have un, um, unnecessarily romantic, idealistic attitudes that they come into trouble later on. Thank you for playing Star Test. <laughs> Thank you. How do you feel at the end of the interview? Dried out. Have you learned anything about yourself? No. What question would you have liked to have been asked? Um, what does God look like? What question are you glad you weren't asked? Um, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> you are now invited to select five characteristics from the on-screen menu which you feel best illustrate your personality. Okay, do I start now? Um, determined, courageous, sensitive, um, weird, funny. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye.